Hello and welcome to another edition of A Computers and Technology. Um, so I ran into this really odd problem the other day. I had a file on a separate hard drive that I have dedicated just for documents, images, and videos. And I could not delete this file. Every time I tried to, to delete the file, um, I would get the message, um, directory cannot be found, try again, try again, try again. Uh, and of course I pushed try again like a thousand times and nothing happened. Um, now, I knew there was a couple things you could do to, in, in this situation. For example, you could try deleting the file from the command line. That didn't work. You could also try shutting down explore, the explorer.exe process and tax, task manager, um, and then going into command line and deleting the file. But that didn't work either. Um, so I was stuck. And then eventually it hit me. I felt really dumb. Um, it hit me a day later uh, that I could just use a Linux distribution, go into the hard drive, and delete the file that way because the Windows Explorer isn't running um, and it wouldn't give me any issues. And that's exactly what I did. And that's what I'm gonna show you guys how to do today. So what I have in front of me is a live CD of Exubuntu 14.04. And I absolutely love Exubuntu. Um, it's probably one of my favorite um, Linux distributions but just because it's really easy to use. It has a lot of features and it's really, really light on system resources. Um, now I have the 32-bit uh, edition uh, of Exubuntu. If you want for this, you can download the 64-bit edition. Um, I'm going to go over that in the video, of course. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you guys how to get a Linux distribution on a CD, um, where to get it from, and then once you have it burned to your CD, I'm also going to show you guys how to delete the file from your live operating system. So what you're going to need for this is a blank DVD, obviously. You're also going to need a DVD burner if you want to burn the live operating system or your Linux distribution to um, a DVD. If you don't have a DVD burner, um, you can actually install a Linux distribution onto a USB flash drive and run it that way, but I'm not going to show you guys how to do that in this video just because it's going to take way too long. This video is going to end up being like an hour if I try to do that. Um, so if there are a lot of requests. Um, I will show you guys how to install Exubuntu to a flash drive and then boot from that. Not all computers are capable of booting from a flash drive though, so uh, a DVD is really your safe bet with this. Um, and then of course, the computer that you want to use the live Linux distribution on also has to have a DVD drive. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up my screen recorder and we're going to get down to business. So the microphone that I use with my computer is kind of awful, so I have to, hur I have to hold it right up to my mouth in order for it to pick up anything. Um, so I'm going to be doing this demonstration with just one hand, um, so just bear with me. But let's go ahead and download Exubuntu from the Exubuntu website. So you're going to open up your internet browser, or yeah, Internet Explorer, um, and then you're going to type in Exubuntu. Just Google search it. It's easier. Xubuntu.org is the site you want to go to. Get Xubuntu, download now. And that's now is where we uh, distinguish between the 32-bit system and the 64-bit system download. Um, you're going to want to download the 32-bit ISO if you have a 32-bit processor. Um, and then for the 64-bit ISO, um, you download that if you have a 64-bit processor. If you have no idea what kind of processor you have, Go ahead and download the 32-bit ISO um, because it will work with a 64-bit processor. Um, the only difference is that the 64-bit version will allow you to address more than 4 gigabytes of RAM. And of course, this is the torrent download. Um, we don't want to go here. Um, we want to go to the mirror download. So United States is where I am at. Ooh, and this looks really intimidating, right? But it's not. Uh, where is it? Exubuntu 14.04. This is the 64-bit. We don't want that. Where's the i386? Okay, so this is the one we want. This is the 32-bit ISO. Um, Exubuntu 14.04 dash desktop dash i386 dot ISO. So you're just going to click on that. And as you can see, it, it is downloading in the bottom left corner. Um, that is going to go into my downloads folder, folder um, wherever you have it set to. Um, that's where it's going to download to. Um, and then in just a second, I'm going to show you how to burn this file to a DVD. 
So next I'm going to show you how to burn the ISO file onto the DVD. And this is different from just clicking and dragging the file onto the DVD using Windows Explorer. Um, you actually have to download a image burning software and directly burn the image onto the DVD or else your DVD drive will not be able to boot from the DVD itself. Um, so the software that I prefer to use is called ImageBurn. You can find it on www.imageburn.com. Um, it is free, just be careful. Uh, it does come with some adware and stuff. You can deselect it in the installation menu. Um, so if you know how to install stuff, you should see it. All I have to do is uncheck the box for the software and it won't give you the software. They're not going to force you to download some, you know, junk. Um, yeah, so I prefer to use ImageBurn and as you can see, I have it up right here. Now, actually, you missed the whole process, so I'm going to go in my shortcuts folder and open it up one more time so you can see the entire process. All right, so once you have it open, you're going to click on Write Image File to Disk. You need to select your source file, which is the ISO file you downloaded. So you're going to go File, uh, File, Browse for a Source File. And if you're like me, I have the downloads directory set to the downloads folder, because that makes sense. Downloads, um, and then you're going to click on the ISO file. There we go. And then all you have to do is select the DVD drive you're going to use to burn the DVD. Um, change your write speed to whatever you prefer, whatever your DVD drive is capable. I just left it on the automatic settings. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and burn it. Of course, this isn't highlighted because I have the uh, I don't actually have a CD in here or a DVD in here, I should say, because I have already burned it. Um, but yeah, you can go ahead and burn that, and then I will show you how to boot from the DVD. There's a couple of different ways to get into the BIOS. Um, every system is different. Usually, it's either delete, F2, or escape. Um, with this particular system to get into the BIOS, we hit delete when we get to the power on self-test screen. Um, so let's go ahead and power my system on. I really should get a tripod out, but uh, not going to do that at this moment. And then when we get to the power on self-test screen, I'm going to hit delete. You can see right there, delete to enter setup. Here, and we are entering the setup right now. All right, so we need to find the boot device priority. And for this particular BIOS, it's under advanced BIOS features. And then we are going to go to first boot device, which is set to the hard disk right now, but we want it to be set to the DVD drive. And I'm going to switch the first device to LS120, which is my DVD drive. That's good. Now we're just going to exit. I'm going to hit escape. To save the features, we will hit F10 to save and ex exit setup. Save CMOS and exit. Yes, we do. And now we should boot up into Xubuntu. Let's just give it a second to make sure it did work. And there we go, booting from CD slash DVD drive. Okay, and at this point, you really don't have to do anything. Um, it's going to detect all of your system devices, um, and it's going to start all of the Xubuntu services. Um, basically, right now, it's just setting up the um, operating system itself to run as a live environment. So now all you have to do is wait for something to come up. Okay, so at this point, we are at a menu um, that prompts us to either try Xubuntu or install Xubuntu. And right now, we want to run the live environment from the DVD, so we are going to click Try Xubuntu. And of course, on the left side, you can see you have a language selection option. Um, I'm just going to leave it at English, obviously. And we are in! So you can see I went ahead and created a test file on the desktop. I went ahead and called it test folder. And this is the file that we are going to be deleting um, using the Xubuntu Live CD.
And if you've made it this far, really from this point on, it should be smooth sailing for you. Now, in the top right corner of the desktop, you can see my three hard drives. I have a 16GB solid state drive with some essential files on it, a 250GB um, hard drive with Windows on it, and a 320GB volume with my YouTube backups and documents. Now, I saved the test file on the desktop directory, so we are going to need to access the drive with Windows on it. So we're going to right-click on it, hit Mount Volume. Once the volume is mounted, you can go ahead and double-click on it. Um, it opens up, you can see all of our various directories. Um, we are going to need to go into Users, um, whatever your username is. And then right here, you can see there is a file labeled Desktop. Double-click on that. And right here, in the top right corner, you can see that there is a folder called Test Folder. And this is the folder that we want to delete. Now all you have to do is click on it, right click on it, and then it's as easy as this, hit delete. Yes, we want to delete it. And it is gone. And of course, let's go back into Windows to verify that the file is indeed off the system. So as you can see, we are back at the desktop and that file is nowhere to be found. So I think that's going to be about it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, just post a comment in the comments section and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And of course, please do not forget to like this video. Thanks for watching. I hope this video answered any and all questions you had. Um, and I will see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology.